Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. In line with the law on restorative justice for children and their protection from maltreatment, the Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, paid a visit to Batilko Child Care House and Child Protection Center to ensure the preparations are being set to start the actual work of the home care for abused children and to ensure that the best services are provided. The minister affirmed that this step comes following the cooperation with other government bodies following Decree 4 of 2021 to issue the law on restorative justice for children and their protection from maltreatment. He said that the start of implementing the law will consolidate the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain regionally and internationally in the fields of human rights protection within the framework of the reform project of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to start implementing the law. The law on restorative justice for children and their protection from maltreatment took effect today, six months after its issuance and the completion of the legislative, technical and procedural requirements for its implementation, marking an outstanding milestone in the justice system and the protection of children's rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain. More on this report. The law on restorative justice for children and their protection from maltreatment represents a culmination of Bahrain's leadership and excellence in upholding public rights and freedoms under the wise and humanitarian approach of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. A new success story in the human rights and development process under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The law is the outcome of a civilized intellectual vision that crowns the Kingdom's legislative and institutional efforts to care for children and respect their rights in the present and the future in accordance with the best international standards. It also reflects the close cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, the Supreme Judicial Council, the Public Prosecution, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, the United Kingdom, civil society and the National Institution for Human Rights. The restorative justice law uses restorative processes and seeks to achieve restorative outcomes that promote the child's rehabilitation and reintegration as promoted by the UN. It is a qualitative addition to modern criminal legislation that gives the child's best interest priority in all judgments, decisions and procedures, regardless of the party that issues them or practices them. It also provides firm guarantees to protect children's rights, shields them from maltreatment, exploitation or moral and physical neglect, and affords them physical, emotional, health, educational and social care in accordance with international human rights. By implementing the law, Bahrain affirms its commitment to modernizing its legislative and judicial system and enhancing its pioneering achievements in respecting human rights, child care and the consolidation of the rule of law and constitutional institutions. As part of its strategy to develop gas stations, the chairman of the board of directors of Babco engineer Jassam Isa Shirawi affirmed that Babco has opened the Tubli fuel station in line with the requirements of the new generation of modern gas stations network. The development of gas stations in various governorates of the Kingdom of Bahrain comes within the framework of a strategic plan to upgrade these stations and develop their investment and service role. And the development of the Tubli fuel station is the beginning of a series of development operations for various old fuel stations in line with the Bahrain's economic vision 2030. Shirawi explained that making use of gas stations as an investment constitutes a global approach and is followed in many countries and that the Kingdom of Bahrain is keen to keep abreast of recent developments and transfer pioneering experiences to it in a manner that supports sustainable development efforts. The Director General of Traffic, Brigadier Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Abdul Wahab Al Khalifa, confirmed that the administration has developed a traffic plan to coincide with the Ashura season as part of the administration's efforts to ensure the smooth flow of traffic. He confirmed the intensification of traffic presence in all places where the commemoration is held through special traffic arrangements since the night of the 8th of Muharram. He pointed to the need to adhere to traffic regulations and rules to ensure the flow of traffic and to abide by traffic diversions in the event of street closures. The Civil Aviation Affairs announced that the countries on the Kingdom's Red List will be subject to updates once a month, adding that the next update will be on the 3rd of September of 2021. Red List 
countries are reviewed based on an assessment made by the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus and updated monthly in line with international developments. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus announced that 75% of those aged 40 years and above who are eligible for a booster have received a booster dose. The task force expressed its appreciation for the quick response and commitment of all to get their booster doses, meaning this percentage could be achieved in record time. The task force stated that the green alert level will be readopted as the lowest level of the COVID-19 alert level traffic light system from Friday, the 3rd of September, 2021. The booster doses maximize individuals' immunity against COVID-19, which in turn lowers the risk of the complications from severe illnesses and death. Anyone who is eligible for, who had not already done so should register to get the booster dose as soon as possible. Bahrain's Ministry of Finance and National Economy reported its biannual financial report for 2021 for the period ending June 30th. More in this report. During the first half of 2021, net government revenues increased by 23% to 119 million Bahraini dinars. This was primarily due to a 33% increase in oil revenues caused by higher oil prices, while non-oil revenues increased by 4%. Actual government expenditure decreased by 4% to 1,639 Bahraini dinars, while recurrent expenditure decreased by 2%. This reduced the deficit by 35% to 520 million Bahraini dinars. Commenting on the occasion, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, said that the biannual financial report of 2021 is a measure of progress that quantifies the remarkable work and that all public agencies do meet citizens' requirements. Meanwhile, the Information and E-Government Authority reported that the value of exports increased by 62% to 327 million Bahraini dinars during July 2021, compared to 202 million for the same month of the previous year. The total value of free exports increased by 45% to reach 60 million, compared to 41 million for the same period last year. The value of imports increased by 10%, reaching 418 million, compared to 378 million last year. The trade balance, the difference between exports and imports, was 31 million Bahraini dinars during July of 2021 versus 135 million for the same month of the previous year, with a decrease of 77%. Strategic planning, along with the persistent dedication of Team Bahrain, has yielded tangible outcomes in the kingdom's path to development, balancing the economy during the COVID-19 crisis. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,128,205 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,073,383 had taken the second, and 232,417 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 1,116 with 99 recoveries and 105 registered new cases. 35 of the new cases are expatriates, 57 are contacts of active cases and 13 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.